friends, it's Eileen coming to you from the Bookmobile Department at the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. I'm excited to be able to share with you my really rad unicorn collection here. I have been collecting unicorns since I was 9 or 10 years old, and these are just a few of the things I have. My friends like to get me unicorn things when it's my birthday, Christmas, just because. So I have a lot of neat little things that people have given me. If you could really quiet, you might be able to hear this one. Pretty cool, right? So when we were talking about topics for the summer, I was the first one to yell out, I get unicorns. So today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about the history of unicorns, and we're gonna talk about some books, and then I'm gonna show you a quick craft you can make. And you'll be able to pick up a craft kit with the die cut and things in it from the Monday Market here at the library. It's opening the first Monday in June, and that'll have the supplies in it for you to make one of these masks that we're gonna be making. So I'm excited to be able to share all this with you today. There is a history on unicorns, even though they're an imaginary animal, People a long time ago thought they were real animals. And there are historians going way, way, way back, um, up to 23, 2,500 years ago, that wrote about trees. So people back then thought the unicorns were magical, just like we do now. And they wanted a piece of the unicorn's horn because it was thought that that would help make them invincible, would help make them strong and fierce. They also believed that the horn help to keep them safe by telling them if their food was poisoned, things like that. So people would pay a lot of money to be able to buy a piece of the horn. And people were did really sneaky bad things in order to sell them a piece of horn. And of course, since a unicorn didn't really exist, a lot of times they were selling them narwhal horns or goat horns or a lot of other animals that might have ones. So people were pretty crafty. And if you want to learn more about the history of unicorns, this is a book that's from the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. It's called The History of Unicorns by Sarah Lasko. And you can also go on the internet with the help of your mom and dad. And Wikipedia has a great deal of information and there's a lot of just personal pages of people that like unicorns that have written things up. So you definitely need to go on with an adult because some of the information is kind of sketchy, but there's a lot out there as well as coloring pages and unicorn games and so much unicorn stuff out there. Unicorn food, just, I could go on for hours and hours and hours about all the unicorn things out there. The library has a lot of books on unicorns as well. We have uh, drawing books that draw mythological creatures. This one is drawing unicorns and other mythical beasts. And then we have chapter books that have uh, unicorns in them, usually in the fantasy area. And we have some by Kale Atkinson, and it tells about these scientific unicorns that all work in a lab together. It's really cute. Um, and it just tells you what these goofy guys do to study unicorns. Very fun. And then for younger kids, of course, there's a million books about unicorns, but I really like this series. Um, this is called the Little Unicorn series, and I cannot say the author's name. It's French and beyond my comprehension. But they have Little Unicorn is angry, scared, sad, and shy. And I really think these books are important right now because children have all these emotions going on that they don't understand. And they may have seen parents with a lot of emotions that they don't understand. So it's good to sit down with your children and talk about these feelings and emotions and validate your kids. Let them know that it's okay to feel however it is that they're feeling. You know, maybe they're really missing grandma and grandpa or the fact that they're not getting to go to daycare or whatever the situation may be in their house. So it's important just to discuss it. So now I want to show you guys how to make this cool craft. You're gonna get a die cut of a unicorn head, face. You're gonna get some sequiny things, but you will need to supply your own glue, whether it's 
glue stick or the Elmer's white glue. Tape is good. I thought when I looked in the crafts, I found some ribbon, so I thought that would be fun to add. And I found some stickers, I thought that would be fun to add. And then I found some, a dowel, but you could also add a popsicle stick or whatever else you wanted. So that, and I, there is one on black. So if you happen to get a black one, you could color on here with chalk, but the sequins and stuff will look just as cool on that. I think it, actually that would be really dramatic and cool. It was said that the black unicorn had extra special magical powers. going to decorate however you want to and we're just going to imagine that I went on with this. My friend Patty made this one. She's into uh, minimalism so it's and I'm going to add my dowel. ribbon right now for time's sake, but you could add frilly ribbon coming through down the side. And there we go, there's our cute little mask.